everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to focus on a very, very interesting instance of a nickel-1 compound. The synthesis of this compound does involve the use of cyanides as well as the formation of hydrogen gas, so do keep that in mind. With that being said, here are the things that I'm going to use to make the nickel-1 compound. First, I'm going to get a source of nickel. In my case, I'm using nickel-2 chloride hexahydrate. You can see that in the Sigma bottle. I'm also going to use, as my source of cyanide, mixed sodium and potassium cyanide. I've already made up a solution of this off-camera, and that is a little bit of a process because it requires filtering some iron impurities present in this. So, I have saved you the time of watching me filter, and I just have a nice clear solution of mixed sodium potassium cyanide. Or, if you for some odd reason happen to have lying around a solution of potassium tetracyanonicolate, then feel free to use that as well. We will also need a base, which in my case is some solid flakes of potassium hydroxide. You can also use sodium hydroxide, that works just as well. And for our reducing agent, I'm going to use zinc. I just have some granulated zinc here. And nice, shiny, fresh zinc metal. That will be used to reduce the tetracyanonicolate to the nickel-1 compound. So, let's uh, get started with the first step, which is dissolving the nickel-2 chloride in some distilled water. Okay, so I'm just going to add some of the nickel chloride to this 25 milliliter beaker with stir bar. Okay, that's probably about enough nickel chloride, and now I'm going to add enough water to dissolve everything. You only need probably about 15 milliliters. Doesn't require much as it's pretty soluble. And now it is nearly all dissolved. So what I'm going to do now is slowly add the cyanide solution, and what we will see is a sort of grayish precipitate of nickel-2 cyanide forming. And as we continue further addition of the cyanide solution, we will form the vibrant yellow tetracyanonicolate ion, which we will see as the nickel-2 cyanide dissolves. This will form the nickel-2 precursor complex. So here I'm going to add the cyanide solution. Immediately we see a precipitate of nickel-2 cyanide, and upon further addition of cyanide solution, we get this nice yellow color. This is exactly what we want, and eventually all precipitate should dissolve. We will get a nice clear yellow solution of potassium tetracyanonicolate. To this now I'm going to add some potassium hydroxide flakes to make it strongly basic. The reason for doing this is that it will react with the zinc in the next step to form nascent hydrogen which will reduce the nickel-2 complex to the nickel-1, which we will see as a very dark red color. But for now I'm just going to add the potassium hydroxide. On second thought I'm going to get a bigger beaker. Now that all of the hydroxide is dissolved, I'm going to go ahead and turn off stirring and grab a test tube. To this test tube, I'm going to add a small amount of this solution. That's probably about good right there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is add a small amount of toluene to create a protective barrier on the top of the liquid here against atmospheric oxygen. 
This will prevent the oxidation of the nickel-1 complex back to nickel-2 by atmospheric oxygen. So now you can see that we have a nice bright yellow layer on the bottom and a clear layer of toluene on the top. So all I have to do now to form the nickel-1 complex is add a few granules of metallic zinc. You can also use sodium amalgam and for that you wouldn't even need to add hydroxide in the first place. Just go ahead and plop the sodium amalgam, of course the liquid form, which is in low concentration of sodium, into the tetracyanonicolate solution and you should get the same color of the nickel-1 complex. However, I prefer the zinc route because it is easier. You know, sodium amalgam can be a bit of a pain to produce sometimes. Alright, enough talking. Let me grab a few granules of zinc. That should do just fine. And I will add these to the solution of the nickel-2 or tetracyanonicolate ion which then will be reduced to nickel-1, and we'll see that as the blood-red color. So here I have the zinc pellets, or granules, if you will, and I'm going to add them right now. Of course it won't be immediate, but we soon should be able to see some sort of color change happening down at the zinc. Let's take a closer look. see the solution is very, very dark red. This indicates that the complex is fairly stable under toluene and in the absence of oxygen. So what I'm going to do now is take some of the uh, dark red liquid containing the nickel-1 complex out from under the toluene layer using a syringe with needle and uh, see what happens if it's left in air for a little while. As we can see, it's fairly stable in air, at least for the moment. It's been out of the, or rather, it's been out from under the toluene for about 1 minute 30 seconds now, and it still hasn't shown any signs of rapid oxidation. Let me give it a little swirl here. And it's still pretty much that same color. Okay, what I'm going to do now is uh, take a separate sample and uh, see what happens when we dilute it in some room temperature distilled water. As you can see, upon addition to some room temperature distilled water, the color lightens up considerably. It is no longer a dark, nearly blood red slash orange liquid. It is a nice, regular orange liquid. Here I have some ice cold 35% hydrogen peroxide, to which I'm going to add some of the nickel one solution. Immediate discoloration and the formation of a white precipitate can be seen. It 
to swipe precipitate has the possibility of being either nickel to cyanide, cyanate, or something different entirely. We are left with a small amount of white precipitate and a completely colorless solution. Well, that's about all I have for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. You can like if you want to, subscribe if you want to, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Videos like this would be impossible without all of you. Thank you. Bird up.